We're going to get right back into the two hives on the granite slab, the package and the nook, because both of them need another box. That's a big question that all of you are wondering and a lot of you have asked me. When do I add my second deep box for the brood nest area? How do I know when to add it? And today I'm going to answer that question, show you how to do it so that it really gets that top deep box drawn out and filled up a lot faster. Plus a free ultimate class giveaway. All this is coming up and a lot more starting right now. Well, there's a lot of larvae down in there. What's up? I'm David Burns and we do have an exciting video on when to add that next high body. If you do it too early, the bees are just going to have a chimney effect and go right up the middle and fail to ever draw out the comb on the outside edges. If you do it too late, oh no, they're going to swarm because they're overcrowded in a single deep. Timing is everything. And I want to share that timing sequence with you so that you make the right choices on when to add that next high body on top. It even applies to when you add your super. So a lot of information coming up. Please watch the video all the way through. This and a whole lot more is in store for you today. I really do appreciate you joining me today. Let's get started right now. All right, let's get to work. First thing we're gonna do is take off the top and remove the Burns feeding system and the jar. We're done feeding these bees. Uh, they're, they're, they're really foraging nicely out there now. There's a lot of clover in my area. And this extra sugar water with some protein powder mixed in. Boy, that was a big help to these bees. Uh, but they're done. They're, they have enough resources, so I'm not worried about that little bit that they haven't consumed just yet. Boy, they're really gluing this down. They really do need another box pretty bad. So it's good that we're going to give them one. Now watch closely. What I want to show you that I'm going to do is I want to lure, I want to bait these bees up to the top by actually moving a frame from the deep on the bottom into that new deep we're going to give them on top. That extra comb they're building on top of this is because they want to build out more comb. All right, so we're done with the Burns Bees feeding system for now. We're going to use that again in the fall to raise a lot of bees of winter physiology. So let's just start taking a look at some of these frames again and decide which one we want to move into the deep that we're going to put above them. I have a deep box here, a deep hive body that I'm ready to put on top. And I've got some drawn comb it's fine it's a couple of frames of drawn comb in there in the middle and what i want to do is i want to take a frame out of this working hive bottom here and i'm going to put it in the top box what i'm looking for is a frame that has open brood if i have open brood uh, a frame up over here of open brood and i put it here that's going to bring the nurse bees up above and start working and feeding those larvae and that activity of the nurse bees working a frame up here is going to make this top deep box start being filled out, drawn out faster than if we had nothing at all up there. When I'm working a hive like this, I've told you before, I really do enjoy working from the, the wall, the frame against the wall, and working my way into the middle. Because usually there's a lot less activity on this outside frame on the wall and this is the one we saw just a few days ago in a video and so I'm just looking for a frame of open brood open brood is defined as either eggs or larvae one larva is a larva two larva is larvae plural larvae there's eggs here in this frame as well as nectar the queen is trying to lay eggs but these bees are also filling cells up in the same area with nectar. It's not enough really that I want to move that up to the deep. I want more activity than just that. Let's try the next one. Remember what I told you students that if you see eggs you're likely to see the queen. Look at all the eggs on this one. Eggs do not have to be cared for yet by the nurse bees that we want. We're looking more for larvae. Let's keep looking. Here's a frame that has very young larvae at the bottom. And some eggs on top. So nurse bees are required to keep feeding 
And you can see these bees that have their head stuck down in the cells. They're actually feeding those, that larvae. And on the other side, you can see as well, there's a lot of larvae down in there. So this is the frame that we want to move up into this top deep. So here we go. We'll set it right inside the new deep high body. And I'm going to go close to the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to put it right here. Now, I need to make sure that I put enough frames back here where all the frames are tight. You never want to make the mistake of accidentally leaving out a frame. That would be bad because the bees will make a comb in the gap that you can't move up or down. Now see we need one more frame which I happen to bring. Oh I was gonna mark this with a pen so that we could watch how long it takes to actually draw this out from nothing. So it's going to be your job now to remember, it's one, two, three, it's the fourth one over. This is the west side. So we'll see as the hive progresses, how long does it take for them to draw this undrawn foundation? Wax coated. Today is May the 26th. Instead of writing it there, it's forever in YouTube now. <laughs> so we'll see how long it takes them to draw that, that frame out. Tighten everything up by pushing it away from one of the walls or both of the walls, whatever. That's lined up pretty good. Let's take our deep high body here and put it right on top. All right. Smooth everything over really nicely. Again, line it all up. I'm pushing everything to the east. Then bringing it back from the east a little bit. Yeah. And remember, we had bees on our Burns feeding system. Bees are exoskeletons, so we can just bang this on the top here. There we go. Last couple of bees. Let's get them in there. There you go. All right, so this is pretty cleaned off good now. Again, you got to save this. We're going to use this in the fall to raise a lot of bees of winter physiology. Some of you wanted to buy these. I know I mentioned it on the last video. We sold out really quick. Those will be back online as soon as possible. Hey, while we're talking about this, I want to show you something. What do you do about this stuff here? Should you clean it off? Yeah, why not? It's kind of a combination of just wax. But I can tell there's a little propolis in there. But you might as well just scrape it off. Get it out of your way. Just so that it won't be in the way next time you go to add this back onto a hive. Some of you with just one or two or less less than 10 hives, you can take time to kind of mess around with keeping everything really, you know, cleaned up and cleaned off of your boxes really nicely. Yeah, I don't really worry about it too much. I want to show you another trick. How do you square up a box here to the box below it? Some people will chase it. They'll square these corners, they'll go to that one. What you want to do is you want to square opposite corners. This corner here is going to be squared up all the way over with this corner here. You see that corner is off? So what I do is I take my hand here where I can feel it. And I do the same on the other side here. I take it where I feel it and I just square it up. Move it around until it's squared on two corners. That pretty much squares it up on the other opposite two corners. That's a great tip on how easy it is to square up boxes. Now, since the top box doesn't really have a chance now, hasn't had a chance yet to be propolized to the bottom box, it may blow away in a real strong thunderstorm. So we're going to put our cinder block back on top to hold the top down and that box in place. Again, it's always better to work bees between 10 o'clock in the morning and about 2 o'clock in the afternoon 
when you have a lot of foragers that are out busy. That's not the case with us today because of my schedule. I was going to do this earlier today, but my day kind of fell apart with some other activities. My furnace or air conditioning broke in our training center, so I had to spend some time and fix that. I fix, I usually repair all my own stuff. Just a list of stuff that continues to need to be done. All right, so for the sake of time, um, I'm gonna either take this frame here or this frame here, not the middle one, maybe the middle one, but I kind of like this frame here the best because I feel like it might have the open larvae that we want to move up to our top deep. So let's loosen up the frames a bit and let's pull that one up and take a look. Now again, I like to pull from the edge because if you sometimes get these frames too drawn out and you begin to move them out, you can roll the bees against the comb if the comb isn't you know, real nice and even. If it's kind of um, sticking out on one frame, sticking into another, and you pull a middle frame out, you really can kill some bees doing that. Well, as you can see, this frame does have a lot of cat brood. And even though I'd like to take a lot of nurse bees, this pupae will do because they have to keep that warm. And before I move on to the next section, I want to encourage you to please let me know that you like the content that I'm creating by giving me a thumbs up. This helps me know what kind of content to create that best suits the needs that you're having in your beekeeping endeavors. And if this is your first time in stopping by and watching my beekeeping videos, please click on the subscribe button and the bell to be notified each time I make a new video and that will help you become a better beekeeper and avoid horrible mistakes. They have to keep this developing uh, pupae at about 92 degrees or warmer. So that's going to draw the bees up to the top just to keep this frame of closed brood warm. All right, so I put it inside. Got a little grass in there. Oh, can't leave that blank, can I? I'm going to put a super frame in here that's got honey in it, and they'll add them about three inches to the bottom. It was close by, so that's handy, but they'll add a little comb at the bottom, which I don't mind. My golf cart is essential for bee work. A larger gas-powered utility vehicle is bad in a bee yard, in my opinion, because it makes a lot of noise with the engine running. My battery-powered golf cart has no noise. Uh, utility vehicles have a lot of fumes, gas fumes exhaust, and that can really get bees irritated sometimes. My electric golf cart has no fumes. So for me in the bee yard, the golf cart is a winner. Ah, oh, beautiful. I'm glad I got this done as the sun is setting here. Excellent. Whew. You know, sometimes you have to do this kind of work when you can get to it. You get off work late and you just can't get around to getting into the hives when you need to. Boy, that box is dirty. It needs painted. <laughs> I'm not going to care. Maybe it'll wash off in a good rain. Put the top on it. Okay, it's time for our giveaway. We're giving away another Ultimate Beekeeping course worth 269 this is an online beekeeping course taught by me and you're going to enjoy it here's the two questions that you have to answer and i'm looking for answers that um, best suit the answers that i have come up with so it can be answers that are close whoever's the closest will be the winner okay so since i showed you frames of larvae today the young developing brood these questions, these two questions, are about the larvae. The first one is this. How many times do different nurse bees visit a developing larvae in order to feed it and care for it during its uh, larva stage? Second question is, as the larvae develops, it consumes a lot of nutrition that the nurse bees are provided. In relationship to their own size, how much food do they consume in relation to their own size? So the first person that gets closest to those two answers, you're gonna win the ultimate beekeeping course. So. 
Good luck. Last night we added one frame and uh, lo and behold, I got a lot of bees up in this deep already on six frames. What is shocking to me, you know, I put one frame up here to bait the bees to go up here. And this thing looks like it's been on the hive for like a month. Wow. Well, that's good. I mean, that's pretty cool to see that the bees really moved up there quickly. Wow. <laughs> Am I amazed or what? Okay, to summarize, I want to tell you when to add that next deep pipe body to your lower deep pipe body. You may start out with one deep brood nest box. You need to add the next one when five frames are filled out. So when you have five frames filled out, it's time to add the next box on top. And by filled out, I mean five frames that have, you know, resources on them. The comb is drawn out. You have brood, pollen, some nectar, honey, whatever. They have to be five completely drawn out and filled up frames. When you have five, it's time to add the next box on top. And I showed you how I pull one out and bait it on top and how well that works. Uh, another thing to, to realize, number two, is that you don't really want to add the second box when you install your package or your nuke at the same time or the bees will just be like a chimney and may only start going right up in the middle and never stretch out. What we're trying to do is get the bees to start moving sideways onto the frames in that bottom deep, and then when they get about half of them drawn out, which is five of the 10, then we feel like we can add the next box on top and they will just continue to get the message there's more room up above. And again, like I said, if you forget to add that second deep, you're gonna cause the bees to fill up that bottom deep too much. Uh, they're gonna be too full. And when they get too full, they're gonna wanna swarm because they are crowded. And again, if you add it too soon, it's gonna take longer to get the outside frames by the walls pulled out. So I hope this has been helpful for you today. I hope you've learned a lot. Right here has actually become a nice outdoor studio for me. I had to get the umbrella to balance some shadows and direct sun hitting my face while I'm filming. But I really like the way this whole front of the store here uh, is a really good outdoor uh, studio. If any of you want to contribute something that can be added to the back here and I approve, you know, I'll leave a address, a P.O. box below. And uh, you might want to contribute to some of the memorabilia in the background here. And you can say, hey, that's something that uh, I once owned. And it's sticking on that wall in the videos now. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? We had a customer come to the store last week. And he said, wow, it looks just like it does on YouTube. So I thought I'd just take you inside and let you see what's behind the, the background here at Long Lane Honeybee Farms. We uh, have a little small store here. This is uh, sort of where we uh, used to do a lot of business before the pandemic hit, but now it's, uh, please make an appointment if you wanna come see us during our business hours. Um, here's the last video I made, kind of these cheat sheets that I had made up to memorize what to say. And then of course we have, you know, typical beekeeping supplies throughout the store here. And we got some cool, You've probably seen this in the, you know, the videos that I've made, some cool posters that we've collected. I've talked about people that send us nice notes. That's nice. And our training center is through there. So uh, this is a nice little store that uh, we took an old garage and turned it into this place to hang out with. So it's pretty good. Here's our book, of course, that many of you have purchased. Look at that. This one's autographed if you stop by. Wow. There you go. An autographed copy of backyard beekeeping everything you need to know to start your first hive and uh, that's available too on our website so check that out boy that box is dirty it needs painted 